Hi, welcome back to Figure It Out. I have just completed my planning stage for my next diorama. It's going to be a rooftop scene with Batman. So I did some research into what do the rooftops look like in New York City. Gotham. So as I was doing that research, I came across a lot of images of these water towers that many of the mid-sized buildings in New York have on top of them. I thought it'd be really interesting to put the uh, a water tower in this particular scene. So what I'd like to do today is do a video on how do you build a water tower and let's go ahead and put a catwalk all the way around it because many of them have catwalks. So I think that that particular build could be something that you could include in a number of different dioramas. So uh, how do we build a catwalk? How do we build a water tower? Put those together. Hopefully this will be a help to you and be interesting. So let's get started. All right, well starting this project, I'm gonna cut some strips for the tank. What I found out is that most of these tanks, these water tanks are made out of wood. So we're gonna make this look like wood. So we're putting some wood planks. We're gonna put some wood grain using this wire brush. Put this uh, wood planks around that. I'm gonna work on the roof. Uh, the, roof the roofs are conical, so we're gonna make a little cone here out of this chipboard. Once that's glued on, then we're going to uh, put the little triangular pieces on top um, of that chipboard to make it look like the roofs do on the buildings. Most of the roofs are made out of wood. However, for this particular build, I'm going to do mine to look like it's metal. I just think it's a little bit more interesting, even though probably incorrect. I'm using this polystyrene, which is this actually fantastic material that I had seen other guys use online to make models. And I think it'll actually go really well for the base of the water tower. So it cuts very easily. You score it, and once you score it, you kind of snap it, and it goes great. It uses this weld-on number three. I saw this little trick as I was watching Adam Savage's channel, where he pours a little bit in the top of a Coke can and uses it to dip his pieces in as he's model making. This didn't really work for me that well, so I stopped doing it. It evaporates crazy fast. So I got done with this little section and then all my weld on number three was gone. It evaporates super quick. So I didn't use that can trick for very long. Now I'm just going some cross pieces for the structure that holds up the water tower. I'm already liking how this looks. It looks really cool. This. Uh, polystyrene is a ton of fun to work with, so you really ought to try it. Comes in different sizes and shapes and thicknesses, so I'm using some round pieces as well as some square pieces for the structure. I'm just dipping straight out of the can because it's just easier than trying to keep up with it. Oh, I think that looks so cool. So one of the things that I discovered that was going to be problematic early on was how to cut out the catwalks. Like there's going to be six catwalk pieces around this circular structure and I need all of them to join up at the right angle and I need them all to be the correct length. And there's actually two lengths because I have an inside piece and an outside piece to make a catwalk. So I have six of these pieces that are gonna be surrounding this round structure. I'm not making them curved, I'm making them straight and they have to marry up at the right angle. And I need to know what these distances are, these lengths of these cuts. So I knew that this was going to be a little complicated. I reached out to one of my subscribers. Uh, his name is Mason and he is an engineer. 
and he walked me through all kinds of formulas and I learned a lot and how to cut these things out. But I wanted to show you guys what I learned and how you can figure this stuff out for yourself without uh, complex math. So I've gone ahead and drawn my circle here and this is how you can figure out how to make you know, straight catwalks around a round structure. So for this particular build, we are going to be uh, doing six catwalk pieces. It's going to be a hexagon all the way around. And so I need to figure out um, some, I guess some geometry. So some things that you should know that in a circle there are 360 degrees all the way around. And in your half circle, it's 180 degrees. And so when you're trying to figure out with six pieces joined, what the angle should be, I can divide this number, this 360 by six, and I get 60 degrees. So I know that my cuts need to be 60 degree angles. And so I cut a triangle out at 60 degrees, this uh, uh, mark here, and that's gonna help me lay out my cuts and so I'm going to take this point the 60 degree point and I'm going to put it at the very middle of the circle and we're going to start drawing our lines great so I have my circle now divided and each of these angles are at 60 degrees which means that when I begin to join pieces up here they will also be at 60 degrees now we're going to take this little triangle right here because I want a catwalk basically to run across this section and join up right here at 60 degrees. Um, in order to do that I need to get a couple more reference points and so I can get those reference points by looking at these intersections here and drawing a straight line. I don't want to overcomplicate this with a lot of lines, but it's important to have this because we're going to pull some measurements off of those lines as well. So, as I look for the intersect point of my catwalk coming across here, it's going to sort of touch the circle at this point. I can draw a line across from here from this line to this line, and that's gonna be my inside cut. So my first little cut is going to be this measurement, this inside of this piece of the catwalk. So I'm gonna cut that across there, cut that across there, and that's my initial measurement. I need an outside measurement also. I need one for the outside of the catwalk, which is gonna be the outside of this piece. And I want my catwalk to be three centimeters so if I mark off on this vertical line, if I mark off three centimeters from that, right there, and three centimeters here on this side, here, I can now draw my outside line here. And then this becomes the outside piece. So this essentially will be what my catwalk piece will look like. This piece right here is my catwalk measurement. Now I can continue to draw that all the way around and we'll have these same connection pieces coming all the way around. I just need to make six of these and that should complete my circle for my build. Now that I've got all my materials, it's time to start cutting out the grid from the plastic canvas. As you can see right there, that's three centimeters wide. It looks like great grid. I'm gonna start gluing on the sticks. I'm using uh, super glue. Actually, super glue gel works a lot better than just regular super glue, just a hint there. And using my tin snips to cut the angle, getting it pretty close to the snips and then sanding it uh, straight. Now I can glue up all my pieces now that I have them done. I went ahead and traced out the curvature once I put the uh, uh, project in between there, the, the tank itself, just to kind of uh, fill in those gaps. Now we're just going to glue it up with super glue.
I did on the last little piece, I did cut out a section so that I could put the ladder on later. You'll see how that looks. So one of those. I'm gonna create a, some balustrades or some, um, just a, some posts that I'm gonna put all the way around. I'm gonna actually, um, I drilled those holes there so I could pull a chain, some jewelry chain through there to make it look like uh, it's been roped off. I'm cutting out the part of the ladder. I'm gonna make this kind of a very flat ladder that runs up the side. So these are the uh, sides of the ladder itself. Again, just using some of the flat pieces. And now I'm gonna cut the rungs of the ladder. Once I got the first one measured right, I can just lay it flat against and use my snips. That uh, polystyrene cuts super easy with these uh, little uh, nippers that I have. Sand the rungs flat. I found that using a, a paintbrush actually works pretty good, pulling that, um, that weld on number three out of the can and using it with this polystyrene. Works a lot better than just trying to dip it in the can. A little more precise. Now it's time to paint everything up. Uh, as always, anything that is foam, we're gonna go ahead and put a coat of the black and Mod Podge mix, just to get everything sturdy. Then I primed it up with some gray primer. Most of the wood on these water tanks is like a maple. It's a real light wood, and so I'm gonna start with this light, but, but most of them are also very weathered. So I'm kind of mixing this uh, lighter tan color with some gray. And this is just a base that I'm going to go over with a ton of other layers because you can see that kind of that gray mix in there. I'm going to go ahead and give the uh, roof a little bit of a shine like it's metal. So a little metal a dry brush going on. Which I think actually looks pretty cool. All the other pieces are getting painted exactly the same as this except for the wood part. So all the metal you see on the roof, I'm painting the catwalk and the ladder and the support structure the same so you'll see that here's where I'm putting in some rust now we're gonna rust that up and I've rusted all the other pieces you can see there in the background okay so now I've got a couple other layers going on in the tank to really weather this wood this is a gray dry brushing I'm putting over the top of this and now we're gonna start doing some dark wash dark wash on the roof to give it that real rusted up look I'm gonna give some credit to Black Magic Craft. Uh, he's the one I saw uh, scraping these soft pastels to get powder and using that pigment powder to uh, dress up the project, his projects. I wanted to make some sort of dark smears, like this has just been out forever in the weather. I've seen a lot of that on uh, the pictures that I saw, so I think that that ends up pretty good. So now that we've got everything kind of glued up, I wanna go ahead and put the structure together. A little bit of super glue adds to get the ladder on. Last thing I'm gonna do is flip it over and put a little support pieces all the way around for the catwalk. All right, well here is our completed build and I gotta tell you, I'm very excited with how this turned out. And there were a number of different building techniques that I had never done before, and so uh, I learned a lot. So I guess the biggest one was we used this polystyrene, this plastic that you can find at the hobby store where they have plastic models. It glues really easily and uh, it kind of melts together, so I thought this is a fantastic application for this. So this whole bottom structure, the ladder itself, is all made out of that polystyrene. Doing the catwalks was really, really interesting. There was some math involved I wasn't prepared for, so big thanks to one of my subscribers, Mason, who is an engineer. So I reached out to him and uh, got some ideas on how, how to find out uh, what lengths I would need for the inside and outside measurements of each of these catwalks. So hopefully that was a big help uh, for you as well. How do we go ahead and put a uh, catwalk, a catwalk around a round structure. Uh, it creates a very 
interesting looking um, diorama piece. So a couple things I learned about using that, that, um, that powdered pigment, it's, first of all, it's super easy to do, just scraping the sides of the soft pastels and putting it on with the brush. In order to kind of lock it onto the project, you're, uh, what I figured out online just by doing some research is to spray it with some isopropyl alcohol. And so I did spray the project down with isopropyl alcohol after I put the, the uh, powdered pigment on there, but when it was wet, I did accidentally touch the top of the roof. And what that did do is that, that alcohol, if you touch it, it's reacting with the acrylic paint and the acrylic paint came off on my hand. So there's this little spot that I had to go back and touch up with all those different layers. And that was a bit of a hassle. I took it all the way down to the primer actually. So when you are using that and you're spraying it down, just be sure you have your project in a place where you can spray it down and not touch it at all. So hopefully you guys will maybe give it a shot, work with some of these materials, do some of these techniques on your own dioramas. If you've enjoyed the video, please do like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching Figure It Out.